the devil attacking your prayer life is not just to get you to backslide that's that's too small a motivation for him to destroy there are little speakings in the world. I refuse to be satisfied. One more drop. And I'll go on Akadia. Stay tuned to this video you are about to watch. Grow in grace and the knowledge of Christ. Number one, I serve him because I love him. But number two, there is such a plan in his dealings with me. Are we together now? He gave his son and you have no idea of the exceeding great and precious promises he has for me. I serve him because I love him, but I do not serve him in vain. There are consolations. The disciples came to ask him a question. We have given all to follow you. It is not in his nature to rob men. No. You do not serve God and go down. This becomes your motivation to serve even in church. Supervised or not, you spend your life like a fool and allow the naysayers laugh and say sorry for the remaining part of their lifetime as they see God begin to showcase through your life what it means to be loved by God. Is someone learning? Many believers are in church, but they do not know God. They cannot identify God. And so the devil plays with their minds. And he gives them all kinds of vain descriptions of God. And they are tempted to believe until they believe that God is cruel. Until they believe that God is a fraudster. And then they extend that pain to everyone who represents him. Are we together? Yes. The Lord is loving. He is gracious. Go and read your Bible. And see what he did with ordinary men who dared to trust him. Whoever told you that this God that you serve is he there to scam you to what end, to what profit? He was God before your arrival. What glory does he get leaving you cheated? That you gave him your life, you gave him your finances, you gave him your all. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The Bible says, but our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, that it walketh in us a far exceeding weight of glory. I will worship him forever, love him forever, because this God is too good. Oh. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because the nation of Israel were taught this. The very nature of God became their formula for victory, Reverend Sam. Every time their enemies encompassed them and it was clear that defeat were imminent, they would drop their weapons and begin to invoke him. You are good and your mercies endure forever. We cannot fight this fight. The enemies, it is clear that defeat is imminent. We need your nature introduced into this equation. You cannot command results until you know God. So when God tells you 2024 is a blessed year, you don't argue around saying, God, can you prove it? No. We are men with our frailties. But if Reverend Sam tells you, meet me at the office tomorrow and take one million, you will start testifying even though you've not collected it. That is faith. Nobody educated you. His integrity, his character became your instructor. It taught you how faith works. There are many sermons, respectfully speaking, that are just a replacement for the bankruptcy of knowing God. They will not be necessary if we press to know God. Thank you. There are three dimensions. Let me just talk about one. Are you ready? How do I know God? By the study of His nature. And his character when you study the nature of God you will understand what God can do read the entire Psalm 103 I have read my Bible by the privilege of God's grace there is no chapter in the Bible that captures a display of God's nature like Psalm 103 Psalm 103 is the richest capture of God's nature and character in my study it says just give us verse 1 Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Then the Bible lists five of them. There are five of those benefits. Number one, who forgives your sins. Number two, who heals your diseases. Number three, who delivers your soul from destruction. Number four, 
who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies honor number five who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle now when you begin to read from verse three the lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed and right to the end it describes for you the nature of god let me give everybody assignment in righteousness go and study psalm 103 devoid start this year knowing the god you are serving know the one who is leading you so you are not confused Are we together? So let me give you the second aspect, the knowledge of God, just for the sake of this uh, discussion. One of the ways we know God again is by the study of His power. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18 to 21. Ephesians, watch this now. The Bible says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Please, let's shout verse 19 together. Ready? One to go. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power. In fact, you can stop there. One of the ways we know God is to study his power. Come and manifest your power. Did they oh, did they oh. Hey, oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Did they oh, oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power. Come and manifest your power. Come and show forth your power. Elijah said, let the God that answers by fire, let him be the God. Even if you do not know his name, wait for his power. Come and manifest your power. Video, video. Listen. In construction, we have very major construction companies and there are times you can know a block that was made by you know just some well-meaning person and one that was made by a serious construction company and sometimes when you see certain blocks they are almost casted like concrete they pour them down and yet they don't break before you see to verify what company you just know that whatever this company is it has to be a solid company to have produced this you can use the works of God to verify that he is there. So when Moses went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, he said, thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews. That is not a name. Let my people go. And Pharaoh laughed. And he said, I'm done talking. He threw his rod. And the rod became a serpent. And then the Pharaoh also called his magicians. And they repeated the same thing. But there are things only God can do. Did you hear what I said? Ah. There are things only God can do. Only God can do. Do you know in all of the recordings in scripture, there were evil spirits who mimic many things that God could do. One of the things that I never saw Satan do was resurrection. They healed. Beelzebub did certain things. But there are certain things Satan cannot do. When you know the extent. This is Paul's prayer. That you understand the extent of his power. So every time you say God like Lazarus. If you were here our brother would not have died. But he said even now. Someone prophesied. Even now. Ah God you didn't do it last year. Because in his economy. There is no such thing as delay. He can come. He can. Ah. Come and manifest your power today. Come and manifest your power. Come and manifest your power. Oh God of signs and wonders, Savior, Redeemer, come and manifest your power today. One more time, oh God of signs and wonders. Savior, come and manifest your power. 
I truly believe that there are people here that what God will begin to do in your life. There are people who had no names in the Bible, but they were described by the spectacular manifestations of the hand of God upon their life. Are we together? I hope you're mightily blessed by this video you just watched. And if you have not given your life to Christ, this is the avenue for you to do so. Do it to like, share, and comment on all our videos. Don't forget to hit the subscription button to get updates from this channel. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of Christ. Stay connected.